Greetings. I'm Noel Deer. Welcome to today's daily devotion. I hope these next few minutes will encourage you as you seek to learn God's word and abide with Christ. Our focus today is John chapter 6, verses 60 through 71. And to understand these verses, we need to do a little review. If we go all the way back to the beginning of John chapter 6, we see the feeding of the 5,000. Now, because of that extraordinary miracle and how many people were a part of that, Jesus gained many followers, many disciples, not just the 12, but many, many who had at least temporarily attached themselves to Christ. Well, then in John chapter 6, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Then, and we saw this in our previous devotion, in verse 54, John 6, 54, Jesus said, the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Now, Jesus was speaking here of the radical nature of what it means to fully trust in him. Jesus was talking about a faith that was more than just an outward keeping of the rules. Jesus was talking about fully embracing and trusting Christ. But because those words were so harsh and because many misunderstood the words, many of the followers began to depart. And so we pick up with that in verse 60, which says, therefore, when many of his disciples heard this, they said, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Now, again, disciples here doesn't refer to the 12, but it refers to these who have attached themselves to Jesus, largely because of the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. Now, Jesus said these things because he wanted the people to count the cost of following him. And many, when they counted the cost, decided they weren't willing to take that step. Now, that's typical of false disciples. As long as Jesus was all about healing and free food and deliverance, they were on board. But when he began talking about confessing sin and committing their lives, well, then the crowd grew smaller. Look at verse 61. Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, asked them, does this offend you? Now, offend there means to scandalize. Does this cause you to stumble? Verse 62, then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Now, this is a reference to something he said back in verse 38 in this same chapter when he says, I have come down from heaven. Now, it's frankly hard to understand, at least for me to understand, exactly why Jesus says this, what we read in verse 62, in the middle of this discourse. Uh, But my best guess is this, that he's saying, one day you will see this. You will see the Son of Man ascending into heaven, but it will be too late for you to respond, too late for you to choose to believe on that day. Well, verse 63 The spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. This is a confirmation that the previous uh, commands he gave, eat my flesh, drink my blood, that that was an analogy. He's talking about the spirit, spiritual things. Verse 64, but there are some among you who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who did not believe and the one who would betray him. So some believe and some don't, and Jesus is aware of that. Uh, He talks about one who will betray him. We'll come back to that in just a few verses. 65, he said, This is why I told you no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by the Father. Salvation, as we've said a number of times, salvation begins with the Father and His purposes. Left to themselves, sinners will always prefer their own sin. Conversion is always a work of the grace, the goodness, the initiative of God. Look at verse 30, I'm sorry, verse 66. From that moment, many of His disciples turned back and no longer accompanied Him. You know, there are three ways, generally, there are three ways that people respond to the words of the Lord. 
Some will just scoff at them and reject them. And we see those people represented here by the Pharisees. And then some people will temporarily embrace them, uh, but they will eventually reject them. And we see those people referenced here in verse 66. And then, of course, some people will embrace them with true faith, true faith. Look at verse 67. We're going to see some true faith here in the next few verses. So Jesus said to the 12, you don't want to go away too, do you? Now that's a big question. He looks at the disciples with a capital D. He looks at the 12 and he says, are you going to leave as well? Well, let's see what a real disciple, a true disciple uh, is going to do. What, what the true disciple, how the true disciple will respond. Verse 68, Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. Now, there's a very important lesson in this verse. What Peter is saying is that there will be times when we don't understand the Lord. There will be times when the Lord will not do what we want him to do. But the fact of the matter remains the same. The Lord is the Lord. The Lord is the only hope we have. The Lord is the only source of eternal life. So what we have is this most wonderful expression of faith. Lord, even when I don't understand, I trust you. That's what Peter was saying. And he was speaking for the other disciples. Uh, most of the other disciples will see an exception here in a moment. And this reminds me of something that Job said in Job 13, 15. He said, even if he kills me, I will hope in him. Job didn't understand what was going on. Job didn't like what was going on as he was facing such adversity. But he says, no matter what God does and no matter what God allows, I will still trust him. That's what Job said. That's what Peter says here speaking for the disciples. And that's a picture of genuine faith. Look at 69. We have come to believe, this is Peter continuing, we have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. That's Peter's declaration of who Jesus is. Now, Peter, his understanding of who Jesus is, it's, it's growing, it's expanding, and we'll see it further develop in the rest of the Gospel of John. But here he says, you are the Holy One of God. Verse 70, Jesus replied to them, didn't I choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. Jesus said, I chose you. I chose you. But one of you is a devil. Verse 71, John gives a little bit of a commentary on what Jesus uh, has said. He says, he was referring to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, one of the twelve, because he was going to betray him. John's commentary on what Jesus meant when he said one of the 12 was a devil. He says Jesus was talking about Judas, who we'll see more about as we get further into the gospel. Now, this wraps up John chapter 6, but let me just highlight this. This is one of the greatest chapters in all of the Bible. It, it began with the feeding of the 5,000, that extraordinary miracle. Then, Jesus walks on water, another extraordinary miracle. In fact, we saw in that miracle that there were four miracles in one. And then Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Such an important statement that tells us who Jesus is and what he does. And then we come to this, uh, come to this uh, uh, response of Peter when so many were leaving Jesus and Jesus asked if uh, Peter and the disciples would leave too. And Peter says, to whom will we go? He says, Jesus, I don't understand everything, but I know this, you are our only hope. What a declaration of faith and trust in Jesus. Friends, thanks for watching or listening today. If you're on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. That helps us get the word out. On your favorite podcasting app, just search for Pastor Noel's Daily Devotions. I hope you have a great day as you endeavor to abide in Christ.